Hello, my yank friends. You won't believe what kind of weird stuff's happening over at the Cobra base. Eh, can't be any weirder than this guy here. Huh? Yeah, so I used to need the Nimbus Cloud to fly, but then I learned how to do it on my own. Do you know how to fly? Yeah, with my jump jetpack right here. Cool! Oi, not the weeb stuff again. No, I'm not dealing with it this time. Well, we looked at some Cobras, now let's look at some Joes. After all, you can't have a toy line called G.I. Joe Classified and not have G.I. Joes in it. First, we have the Nameless Ones with the Steel Core 2 pack. I'm not the biggest fan of army builders, and especially army builders on the hero side, but if we had to get any for the Joe team, these were the ones to get. That said, I'm not fully into how they made the transition. It's mostly because their armor just seems too bulky, and the shoulder pads love to slide down. It does have some fun things, like the knife on the chest, the classified communicators next to the head, and even though I have problems with those shoulder pads, I do like that they have different ones between the male and female figure. For the firearms, they have the standard issue laser pistol, and your choice of one of three different rifles, with an optional silencer. Nothing much to say about them, then their guns. They got those same blast effects, and I can't really get the female's trigger finger into the trigger, which is upsetting. I also don't understand what's going on with the visors, with all these blue lines going around it to, I guess, give it a more sci-fi feel. Those alternate helmets they came with that make them look more pilot-like also have these weird lines, and combining that with the detail of the gold gives them a bit of a Halo vibe. But why would they have pilot helmets? Well, that's because they come with these jump jetpacks, a great thing to see included in the line. And what a perfect way to start them off by giving us two of them. And they have their own effects to help them feel like they're really flying. Really hope to see these things again with Grand Slam and Stardust at some point. Alright, now that we've looked at the grunts, let's move on to Grunt. Yes sir, one of the original 13 slash 14 Joes, helping us get closer to getting them all in the classified style. Not surprising anyone, he's done up in a basic green uniform, but they did gussy up his web gear with stuff like those nice graphics with his name next to the red, white, and blue. Underneath that, he has a phone strapped to his chest that can fold down into this weird-looking sound wave thing. That said, when you're folding it, it's going to collide with the knife, and I just don't get why they would put his knife here. It could have just gone on his hip, boot, head, anywhere, than the one place that it was going to be a problem. I just don't get how this was able to get through the design process. In the guns department, he has a pistol on the back of his belt, on the left side, which I guess means he's left-handed, and on his backpack he can carry his two rifles, one of which is the M16 that his original toy came with, and it's pretty warped on mine, and I honestly prefer to just ignore it. His second one is the iconic XMLR-3A laser rifle, that is that fake rifle that was made for Snowjob back in the 80s, and is famous for being the default gun for every Joe in the original Sumbo series. And I like the colors here more than in the original Sumbo series. It came out perfectly, and I'm sure it'll be reused for many figures in the future. The last thing we have to look at with him is the head. And it really is just an average Joe, which is the point of Grunt. He has his helmet to put on top of it, and honestly, it looks a little big on him. And the undone straps get in the way of the web gear. For a different look, he has a green recolor of the default steel core helmet, and I think this here is so you could army build if you wanted, but I don't know who would want an army of guys who all have the same name on their chest. I thought I wouldn't use this head, but with me not really liking that helmet on his original look, I think this will be the way I keep him. After all, he does look good in it. Moving on from the ground troops to the underground with Tunnel Rat, and the stripes painted all over his skin. These have always looked odd to me. There are Arter Joes with painted faces, but none of them have confused me this much. It says something when you look weirder than Hit and Run. The one thing about this toy that is upsetting is that his gear seems to be too big for his torso. His gun holster, the neck scarf, the bullet belt, the purse, it's all just so loose on him. The bullet belt especially. His backpack is huge, 
which is both a callback to his original toy and the Rio Tunnel Rats back from the Vietnam War he is based on. It doesn't really fit into the more modern style of the classified line, but I do like the callback, and the removable flashlights are a pretty cool touch. What he does come with that is more modern is this set of night vision goggles, and these I like. They slot over his head perfectly and just look cool on him with four scopes splayed out making him look like a four-eyed cyborg. It's just a fun little piece. And of course, we got to see how he's armed up. First with this nice combat knife that is stored on his left thigh and that nice silver paint on the blade. On the chest, he's packing an old-fashioned revolver with some nice paint on the handle. And this is a more retro piece of gear I have no problem with him having. And finally, he's got his big old machine gun that everybody remembers him having and is way too big to take into those tunnels he crawls around in. But nobody cares because this thing is just too cool looking. And you just want to recreate that one comic panel of him mowing down all those cobras when he has this thing in hand. And that's the feeling we all want to have with a tunnel rat figure. Now, along with the real American heroes, comes their friend from across the pond, Big Ben, who has made his way to the classified line through the Walmart-exclusive Night Force line, looking wonderful in these dark, more forest-like greens, the extra ammo across his chest, and the flag up on his arm. He's sporting the classic head with the big winter hat, and because of the story of this Night Force line, you can switch it out with a gas mask. If you wanted to build a squad of British troops, you could get a couple of this guy, all with this head. Given how great looking he is on his own, I'm sure it could look good as a team. When it comes to what he's loaded with, it's all guns all the time, with these two rifles that he looks crazy dual wielding. And that is just so silly that it's fun. And if that wasn't enough artillery for you, he also has a machine pistol just to do some rapid fire. And I'm not talking about the neon VHS tape guy. Overall, Big Ben is a simple yet effective figure. And that's something I can appreciate. All right, now to wrap things up here, let's look at the deluxe price point with Tripwire and his new buddies, Aspara and Mobile Armored Control Level for Explosives Audience Disposal. Or McCloud, if you want to call it that. What an interesting character to have at a higher value, given that he is very simple in concept. They could have had him be just like the original and just give him a backpack with a stick on it, and that could have been enough. And when it comes to those things, they were done pretty well. It's got all this great tech detail all over it. And the only problem I really have is that it can for some reason only store one of the mines instead of both like the original. And with the mines comes the mine detector. And it looks really nice. But I do have to admit, I do worry about it maybe breaking at some point because of how thin it is. And if it does break in the future, that'll be very upsetting. Because he can't really be him without it. Then... He would just be another guy in green with a pistol and two sets of clothes. Yeah, they threw in two sets of armor for this guy, which is pretty cool. First giving us a more classic-like look, just with this neck brace that you can take off and see his padded shirt and this face. And if you know Larry Hama's G.I. Joe, this face is pretty Fred looking. What are you hiding, Tripwire? Well, whatever he's hiding... He can do it in this big, bulky, alternate look with the completely covered face helmet and this gigantic neck guard, and I do not like this at all. It just turns him into a nobody who stands in the background instead of somebody with a name and character. Speaking of characters, we got some new ones here joining Tripwire in his little rat buddy, Aspara, which is a perfect animal partner to give him with how rats are trained to help with mine detection because they are small enough not to set them off. And they're just so cute looking in their brown fur and little red fest. Just a lovely pet. And the 30 bucks were almost worth it just for them. And along with the rat, he also has this drone to help him in the field called McLeod. And this guy is also pretty simple. But what makes it great is that unlike other toy drones that get included with our figures, it has a fully movable arm to actually handle those mines it has to deal with. Tripwire also has a controller to pilot McLeod, 
And this is just one of those modern pieces of equipment that is good to see in the classified line. Well, that's a lot of green. Does make you wonder when this line will bring in some of the more neon characters, because the one thing this line could use is some more color. Even still, these figures may have some small flaws here and there, but they are still an amazing take of G.I. Joe in the modern world, and I would say some of the best toys on the action figure market today. 